On 30th March 2015, at around 7.15 p.m., barely after the light drained away and dusk enveloped the skies, Joan Kagezi was among us thousands trapped in the traffic gridlock on the way home. She stopped at a roadside stall in Chiwatli, a suburb in Kampala, to buy fruits. A gunman who had trailed her and who was transported on a motorcycle fired shots at her that shattered the window of her vehicle in the presence of her children. Barely after, she slumped on her seat and was pronounced dead. The suspect, who appeared to be a skilled marksman, slipped away on the motorcycle. The eyewitnesses described the suspect as a light-skinned man. The, the, the eyewitness was close. Uh, did not quite see him, but he saw the killer who was putting on a, so that a, sock, a sock in the head, but he could see the, the features of the face. You know, the, the guy was not uh, scared. Two years later, on March 17, 2017, the Assistant Inspector General of Police, Andrew Felix Kawesi, was gunned at Kulambiro, which is within the same vicinity of Kagezi's assassination. On June 1, 2021, assailants trailed the former Chief of Defense Forces and Works Minister, General Katumbo Amala, and barely after his vehicle had driven through the Kulambiro Ring Road, he was shot in a raid that resulted in the death of his daughter and driver. The attack was also within the same neighborhood where Kagezi and Kawesi were killed. These brazen killings awakened the collective conscience of a country scarred by violence. Kagezi's assassination was preceded by the gangster style assassination of Muslim sheikhs from mid 2012, the killers never to be apprehended and punished. That's where I'm saying, that's where the interpretation. So I don't need Lino because I think Lino doesn't know Chinyarana and I appreciate Chinyarana myself. So At the time of her death, Kagezi was the head of the Directorate of Public Prosecutions, War Crimes and Anti-Terrorism Division, in which capacity, at the time of her death, was the lead prosecutor in a high-profile terrorism case involving suspects in the 2010 terrorist bombings in Kampala. With a sharp prosecutorial wit, Kagezi was a dyed-in-the-wool conservative who was uncompromising in her pursuit of the truth. For this, her peers lionized her. So who wanted Kagezi dead and what was the motive for killing her? Barely after, security chiefs, including the former Inspector General of Police, General Karekaihura, promised to quickly bring to book the killers of Kagezi. A number of arrests were made, including those suspected of being members of the Allied Democratic Rebel local cells, but the evidence against them was not cogent. Police also raided a house in Obusega, a Kampala suburb, where they arrested four suspects alleged to be linked to the shooting. All the four were later released without any charge. Counter-terrorism officers also arrested ex-Guantanamo Bay detainee Jamal Chiemba for possible links to the shooting. He was here because he was going to the mosque and we got the news that Kageza has been killed. He was also surprised God Kagezi helped her the other time to, to, go, to get out from the prison. And he asked his, himself that, e -e, why, he, why was this lady killed? Within three days, he was, called, he was arrested that he killed Kagezi. Jamal Chiemba, alias Tony Chiembas, the Imam of Masaj Takwa Zana in Chiriamanyanga Zone in Machinde Sabagabo Division, wife Sulai Chiemba accused security organs of profiling them. What hurts me really, when Kagezi was killed, my husband was here. And maybe the, it took three days, then they came for him that he killed Kagezi. I don't know at what time and where at, at what place he killed her. Now I'm requesting the government, if they know who killed Kagezi, let them tell us. 
Jamal Chiemba has been arrested several times on suspected connections to Islamic extremists. In 1998, he was sent to the United Kingdom to pursue a degree in pharmacy only to be arrested in Pakistan in 2002 in a U.S. operatives-led sweep of suspected Al-Qaeda terrorists. He was detained at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba until 2006 when he was released and compensated for wrongful detention. He was arrested again in 2012 and later in 2015 during the Kagezi murder investigations and was released and arrested again in January this year on suspected ADF links. The Buganda Road Chief Magistrate Court last Friday remanded him until tomorrow, Monday. I tried to ask but I don't get any answer from the police stations or from the security organs. I don't know why. I want to know why my husband is arrested several times without being charged. If he's really doing those things which they tell that he is doing them. According to police sources, detectives tracked the phones of all those who were near the scene of crime at the time of the shooting. One of the persons whose phone was tracked by the officers was an evangelist based in Weogedere, Wakiso district. Upon his arrest, he told detectives that he had visited the area to pick up his piano he had earlier taken for repair. He was later released. Some of the eyewitnesses were placed under the police witness protection program and kept at a safe house in Chengira for a year and were later freed. In total, 50 suspects were arrested in connection with Kagezi's death, but none has been convicted and found guilty in the courts of law. The status of the case is further investigations. The case is on further investigations and no suspect has appeared in court yet in respect of the matter. Six years later, in September last year, police forwarded the investigations file to the DPP for Peruso, but there is barely any progress. The case file was perused and we noted that the evidence was wanting and so we pointed out areas of further inquiry for the police to conduct further investigations into the matter. The case file was therefore submitted to the police with instructions to carry out further investigations into the matter. This, the former DPP, now on the Supreme Court bench, Justice Mike Chibita described as a disappointment on April 12th, 2018. This is one of the greatest disappointments for a prosecutor that one of our own was gunned down. We believe in the line of duty and yet three years down the road we don't have somebody being prosecuted for this offence. We have some leads and we are hopeful that sometime we'll be able to bring the perpetrators to justice. He told journalists at the Uganda Media Center that the actors were likely organized. Uh, it seems the people who did this uh, were well organized. They were not uh, your ordinary criminals. That is what we are trying to, to get from this. In other words, they were able to plan it and uh, also plan their escape and ensure that their tracks were covered. That's what we are suspecting. Two, remember when uh, the late John was killed, there were a number of arrests actually. But when we looked through the evidence, we realized that uh, these uh, were not, could not have been the people. So th this was, uh, I think, part of what made it hard, is that uh, the investigators followed a track which was uh, not the right one. And every time you follow a, tra a wrong track, that means you are missing the right one. And uh, then the tracks sometimes get covered. NTV Panorama has tried to piece together a number of leads to try and unravel those behind the assassination of Kagezi. 
Was Kageza killed by those linked to the suspects she was prosecuting for staging the deadly twin bombings that killed over 80 people at Chadondo Rugby Club and Ethiopian restaurant? This is quite a plausible theory. The American Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI, sources familiar with the matter, which offered a support role to the Uganda security organs in the 2010 terrorist bombings case, offered corresponding investigative support during the Kagezi investigations. Did those who masterminded her assassination take advantage of this high-profile case to shadow the heinous act? The truth lies between any of these theories. Six years after she was gunned, the president during a televised address on the COVID-19 pandemic delivered on June 6, 2021, revealed that the killers that assassinated Kagezi are abroad. The president revealed that he would direct the then director of criminal investigation department, Grace Akulo, to give the country a brief on all the high-profile murders and the progress of their investigations. He, however, didn't reveal when this would be. Akolo was early this year replaced by Tom Magambo and moved to Interpol as director. By the time of her replacement, she was yet to give a brief on this assignment. The disclosure by the president appears to be premised on cogent evidence that intelligence and investigative agencies have shared. According to highly placed sources, one of the suspects, believed to be the hitman, is a criminal who was on remand at Luzera prisons but was granted bail in December 2014. The suspect, a light-skinned young man with a polite demeanor whose name we shall not reveal for security and legal reasons, had been incarcerated on two counts of murder and aggravated robbery. Sources at Luzera prison revealed that at the time he was remanded, he bore a fresh wound around his neck after his victims tried to fend off his attack. He was later stitched at Malago Hospital and later healed. It is also revealed that the prima facie evidence against him was cogent and there was a likelihood of a conviction if he was committed to the High Court for trial for the offenses of murder and aggravated robbery whose maximum sentence is the death penalty. Sources also revealed that he lived a lavish lifestyle inside prison because he had access to money from an outside contact that lived in Europe. He dressed well and fellow prisoners competed for his favors and upon doing his chores, they were paid with foodstuff and cash. The alleged suspect also sponsored football leagues in prison. So, how was he granted bail? The prison spokesperson, Frank Bainey, declined to comment on this story. He said, As prisons, we have nothing to do with that case. If the person, the suspect, you are talking about had not been convicted, then that is an issue of police and the DPP. Upon getting out of the prison and putting Kagezi out of action three months later, the suspect managed to leave the country. The spokesperson of the Office of the Directorate of Public Prosecution, Jacqueline Okui, could not comment on our facts. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions does not discuss points of inquiry or investigations or suspects, names of suspects in cases that are under investigation. And this is because investigations would be jeopardized. So where cases are under investigation, it's preferable, it's advisable, it's prudent that we don't discuss the details of the investigations. She said the matter is still under probe. So investigations cannot be predicted. We have cases wherein investigations are done and completed in a short time. But we also have cases where investigations take a long time to be concluded. It really depends on the complexity of the matter. I suppose that uh, Joan Kagezi's case is one of the complex matters, considering the fact that the investigations have taken really long. 
highly placed sources claim that the suspect later fled to a European country where his girlfriend, who financed his bail fees, lives. The embassy in Kampala of the said European country declined to comment on the matter. It has been established that Uganda does not have an extradition treaty with this European country we can't mention for legal and security reasons. The people who killed John Kagezu were, were identified. Why they have not been prosecuted, I have now heard it from from Susan now for the first time that transboundary, I don't know what, I don't know what. But if it is transboundary, why not publicize it and you embarrass those who are harboring them if these fellows, because like I heard that one of them was living somewhere, I know he was living, because you know your, your theater actions of, of lawyers, I don't want to talk because there is subjudice. So I, I don't know why you called me here, because I can't say anything. But I know the story. So the story is, these people were seen, were, were identified. They, 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 was, they, they were seen clearly, and we have got a border was talking about working with the police. Those departments have good talent in, in them if they are well used. In uh, in the police, we had a department who could do forensic reconstruction. These people say, the, the person you saw, how did he or she look like? Then the person describes in words. Then the forensic draws. Uh -huh. So these people, when they drew, we knew the, the, one of the criminals, and we know him. So I was asking uh, the, my girl there in the CID, Akulo, what happened? Oh, we are still what, what, what? Transboundary, what, what, what Susan was saying. But if it is transboundary, the, if they say that they don't want to bring back that person here because we are killers. Okay, you try him there. Is that allowed? Why can this person not be tried uh, there and, and sentenced, uh, put in a, a hotel, what, what they call a prison, for life? At least we shall know that, that, that we know the, the person. Where is the attorney general? Why can that, why, why can that not be done? It isn't crime trans, transnational also? It isn't uh, accountability? Trans, uh, Abodo, you help me here. So many issues dealing with the, this. Uh, uh, trying of offenders. Sometimes when they don't want to extradite an offender because if you have a death penalty in our laws, then they don't Okay, want you to. try him there in your... And sometimes they can, we can do that, Your Excellency, but it, it, I think it just depends on what relationship, what treaties we have with a particular country. Yeah, but we bring it up so that, because now the, the people of Uganda are demoralized because somebody was killed and it appears as if we don't even know the one who killed the person. If we know who killed the person but we say he's somewhere where they don't want to bring him back, then at least people will know. Uh, what is the Maybe Susan knows more about this. Susan. 
Your Excellency, what the DPP has said is the correct position. That? That... Um, uh -huh. So, so what, what are you telling me now? <laughs> because you are telling me nothing. That. Your Excellency, we need treaties the, 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 to be signed with a number of countries. Was the suspect acting alone or was he under instructions from his puppet masters? Were the masterminds external actors or did rogue officers within security organizations orchestrate it? The longer it takes government to find those who killed Kagezi and other high-profile officials and prosecutes them in a competent court, this will only embolden those planning to sow mayhem in the country.